Dear friends, in this lecture, we are going to discuss measures of central tendency at the foundation level. What is a measure of central tendency? Whenever we measure things of the same kind a number of times, a fairly large number of such measurements, there will be a tendency for one measure, if we can identify, that will cluster around the middle value. In other words, we raise a question, is it possible to identify one typical measure in such a manner, the remaining items in the data set will have a tendency to be around this particular measure. Such a measure is called a measure of central tendency. And in statistics, we have a very a set of very popular uh, measures, arithmetic mean, median, and more. That is not to say harmonic mean, geometric mean are not important. They are also. But at the foundation level, we will just illustrate arithmetic mean, median, and more with an example. Before we go to the example, let's understand what is arithmetic mean. In short form, it's called mean. All of us know mean is nothing but the sum of all observations divided by the number of observations. Median is the middlemost observation in a data set when it is arranged in the ascending order of magnitude. Mode is that value which has the largest number of occurrences or frequency of occurrence. And whenever all these three measures are equal to one another, then the distribution will be a symmetrical bell curve. When they are not, it may be a skewed distribution, skewed to the right or skewed to the left, or a very picket distribution. All these things are uh, implied by the behavior of these three measures. So let's take an example. As you can read, uh, there is a problem faced in an engineering company the inspection records of a host assembly operation revealed a high level of rejection. An analysis of the record showed that the leaks were a major contributing factor to the problem. It was decided to investigate the host clamping operation. The host clamping force torque was measured on 25 assemblies, figures in foot pounds. The data are given below, 25 observations, you can see 8, 13, 15, 10, etc. till 15, the last value, compute mean, median and more. So in the Jupyter node, I'm just uh, trying to give few codes here, which you can uh, later on modify if you desire for another problem, but just to understand, and uh, a very simple way to do it in Python. It is not a programming course. I'm just giving some codes uh, that are useful for the purpose of uh, understanding. So in the Jupyter node, first we have to import the core libraries, import pandas as PD. PD is the short form for pandas, which I'm using. Import statistics as stat, a short form. Then I define a variable torque, T-O-R-Q-U-E, and enter all the 25 observations, 8, 13, 15, 10, 16, 11, etc. till 15. Then I say my data is equal to PD dot data frame torque. Data frame in pandas represents a file with rows and columns. The names of the columns represent the variables. So when I do this, my data is a file with a name tar. 
but how do I mention that the name in the column should be there? I put my data dot columns is within quotes dark. So I print my data, for example, it will be printing the first four rows. Then I have mean, stat mean, TARC. Median, stat median, TARC. Mode, stat mode, TARC. Then I print mean, median and mode. Mean within quotes with a colon here so that the label will be there and I get the answer. So let me see how it works. So let me run this now. Now you see here, the first five rows are given, dark. These are the five observations. Python starts with the row number zero. Instead of one, two, three, four, five, it's actually five rows. And you see a simple, fantastic, uh, easy output. Mean is 14.2, median is 14, mode is 14. So approximately all the three are equal in this case. We will proceed further on these things and more in the next lesson. Thank you very much.